So um, I'm just going to, without further ado, hand over to you guys. Um, brilliant to have you here, and thank you for all that you gave to us last night. It was a, a really super bonus, and it looked great. So thank you. Thank Katie. you. Thank you very much for inviting us. Hello, everybody. I know this is the graveyard shift after lunch, so, you know, we're going to try and be quick, interesting, and hopefully you won't snooze. Um, my name's Katie. I'm from Cecil Green Arts. We've got Ampta here and Harry. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Can we have our first picture up? Who pick, who, who's got, how does the clicker work? You've got to press it then. So we started in 2012 when uh, Katie, myself, and Judy Connor, who just this Christmas retired, leaving a great gulf in our organization, but um, best wishes to Judy in retirement. We got together to work on a parade. In 2018, we incorporated as a company, and Cecil Green Arts works mainly, but not solely, on art parades and street theater using puppets and illuminated arts. We've been inspired by parades around the British Isles from the Belfast Beat Initiative, Edinburgh Beltane Society, Chester Watch Parades. And most recently, personally for me, when I worked in 2009 with In the Heart of the Beast, uh, Puppet and Mars Theatre in Minneapolis, USA, following the experience of their fantastic May Day parade, I came back to Bradford in 2010. And when I got back, I wanted to build big puppets and I want to be part of a parade. And I met Katie here and Judy, um, and we looked around for what we could get involved in. And right beside where I was living in BD5 is the Canterbury Estate. A little bit of research told me that Canterbury Estate used to have a thing called the Canterbury Carnival. Um, and it was dormant. It had come out of the Bowling Park or West Bowling Carnival, I think, and Canterbury Carnival had been a spin-off. It wasn't happening. Um, but we got together with the school and the children's centre um, to revive the parade and also start a lantern parade through the local Horton Park. We started working with local a local residence group and children in the local youth club and to gather their stories. It turned out that on the estate, the heroes we wanted to celebrate in our parade were the cats, because the cats kept the rats and the mice at bay. So we were busy working with the children, making cat masks for the parade, invoking the spirit of all the cats we could into the art. Um, it was just a week before the parade when I was in the staff room of the local primary school I walked in there to find pest control putting out a really large cage trap, like this big. I said, what are you hoping to catch in there? I said, innocently. It turns out the school now had a problem with feral cats squatting in the school. So um, <laughs> I don't want to blame the parade for that, but it was, uh, I like to think we had maybe something to do with it. The evening of the first Lantern Parade in Horton Park came. We had all our illuminated puppets ready. We had to rig them outside because you should never build a puppet bigger than the door you have to carry it out of. <laughs> the building we were in was by the park. It only had a single door. And the head of the giant snake, is there a picture of a giant snake? The head of the giant snake just fitted out sideways through the door. We made it into the park. People came with the lanterns they had made at the workshops. It was a stormy evening. And as we entered the park, there was suddenly a flash of lightning, an ominous roll of thunder. The heavens opened into a huge hailstorm. It felt like an omen as little children around me were getting battered. <laughs> Either we were doing something right or something very, very wrong. But that was the worst weather we've ever had. And every year since, we've done better than that. That's me. Sorry. <laughs> At Cecil Green Arts, we are all about wonder and spectacle, creating events and experiences for people that are out of the ordinary. We gather in cold, dark parks or city centre streets to inspire imagination, wonder and beauty. Many of the communities that we work in are accessing street art for the first time. And we encourage creativity and reveal hidden artistic talent by providing opportunities for people to play, 
get messy and work together. Community involvement gives our events meaning. These shared experiences, unexpected meetings, and bonds of friendship create memories that increase understanding and acceptance between people. Our mission is to place celebratory, inclusive, oh, gone the wrong way, go right, click right. We're such a professional outfit, aren't we? Sorry. <laughs> I'll start that again, because what I'm now about to say makes it sound like we, anyway. Oh, uh, sorry. Our mission is to place celebratory, inclusive and high quality outdoor arts at the centre of every community within Bradford District and beyond. Here in Bradford, everyone talks about where they're from with a, by their BD postcode, and there are about 24 postcodes in Bradford. We reckon we've currently worked in about half of them, so we've got a way to go yet. We are really lucky to have people who have inspired us and mentored us along our journey, and we follow in the footsteps of people like Welfare State and have contemporary puppeteers and makers such as Andrew Kim and Alison Duddle who've been very generous in sharing their experience and knowledge with us. <laughs> we have benefited from training with Walk the Plank to learn how to create fire drawings and these provide a spectacular finale to utilize the hypnotic magnetism and beautiful spectacle of fire. If we look back at our personal journeys and how we've reached this point, we realise we've always been interested in art without walls, which is free and accessible to all. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Amter. Um, my journey with Cecil Green started when I applied to be an intern for the Lister Park Lantern Parade last autumn. I was one of two interns. My role was to assist in weekly workshops at the Cecil Green Art Space and to learn the basics of large puppet creation. The project's theme was inspired by open community meetings where we explored what we wanted the parade to say. The title we came up with was Together We Rise. People wanted to express a lot of anger and we used dragons as an image for channeling this anger. I spent six weeks learning the basics of building a large puppet and I decided to make a scorpion, my star sign. This connected well to the theme. There were two evening workshops every week. People came to work on their projects, and we talked and we got to know each other. We formed a team in a sh short period. I feel like this wouldn't have been able to happen if it wasn't for the open mind, hearts, and arms of Cecil Green Arts. Every team member felt heard and valued, from freelancers to volunteers. I feel we forged lifetime friendships and professional relationships. We are interested in creating theatre as ritual where the lines between performer and audience are blurred and we all become participants or players in the act. I hear time and again in the workshops the, follow the words, um, I'm not an artist or I can't paint, I can't sing. You can insert in there whichever art form you like. Um. I'm not okay. So this concept that I'm not an artist or I, I can't do that is something we come up against. And we don't, I think we don't naively believe that everybody is instantly an artist, but what we've experienced is that when everyone brings a little creation that they've made um, with their little candle into the dark, when we all come together, that's when the excitement that happens, that's when the magic happens, and it's the whole thing all together, which is, is, is art. As a company, we have a passion for the earth and its people. We intentionally choose groups to work with that are marginalized. Most recently, we've been working with newly arrived asylum seekers who are staying in Bradford hotels. We believe that ignorance is often the mis cause of mistrust and violence, and we seek to break through that ignorance and the barriers between us by building relationships, by getting to know each other whilst sharing our stories. We aim to build community and friendships whilst we are creative together. And then we use that experience and those shared stories to make our statement and to give the people and ourselves a voice.
Since the internship, I have worked for Cecil Green Arts as a freelancer. We have been running art workshops for families and small children. On Sunday, we took everyone to, into Bowling Park in the dark with lanterns, fire, puppets, storytelling and music. There is something special about taking light into the darkness, but we will reclaim that space together. Um, as a the theme of this conference is partnerships, it got us thinking about times when partnerships went well and not so well. Like most small organisations, we've always worked in partnerships with various people over the years. And we've heard a lot of wisdom already this morning, particularly in this room, about partnership working. Our experience is it's sometimes quite hard, but made easier by clear boundaries and roles at the outset of a project. There is always the backdrop of power differentials at play with funders, town councils, community organisations. We've had similar challenges about just how many logos need to be on one leaflet. <laughs> but developing good working relationships takes time and effort. And one of the positives, particularly with us, is because we're, we're working communities so much, it'd be really hard to reach some of the communities um, without working with community centres that are completely embedded in those communities already. Um, possibly one of the best things about partnerships are that we can't be too precious about we, what we do, and it forces us to hold on a little bit more lightly. So that's nearly us. We're going to do a little pitch now. Uh, our roots have always been in circus and street theatre. Uh, we aim to create shows um, that are bookable and professional. Let's have a look at some of them. <laughs> Go on, keep going. Rumble the Giant, the Fairies, and the Bradford Boar, all funded by BPH. That's great. And we've got a little video. Is that right, David? Yeah, so that's us. Thank you very much for listening. We'll leave you with uh, 90 seconds of video. Thank you. Amto, had you ever worked with a, a, a professional cultural organisation before your internship? Is it your first time? Yeah. Brilliant. And now you're working. That's great. That's what we love to hear. Fantastic. <laughs> really glad you shared that. That was great. Let me just do what I'm doing there. Right. Uh, so, uh, when we take our festival focus groups around the country, one of our really exciting visits this year um, was, was to see uh, Cohesion Plush's Cohesion Plus is a Mela festival, and the man behind that, Govinda, is going to join us now. Govinda, welcome. Thank you. 
I'm going to give you this mic that I've just turned off. Thank you. Good afternoon and... Whoa. That's you, yeah? So let's start again. Take two. Ready? Good afternoon and what I would say in Punjabi when we say hello, we say Sasri Gal. Yeah, at the back as well. Feel free to join in. So, I'm a little bit nervous about this presentation, not because I'm scared of you guys. You're not, you're not frightening, you're nice and friendly. It's just that my office set the presentation up and I've not seen it. So, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. So, we're going to... And the other thing is, I'm going to need the clicker, yeah? It's that one, yeah? yeah? And I'm a walker rather than someone who sits down. And it's nothing to do with the fact I've only done about 4,000 steps. So, let's see how we get on. So, Govinda Sander, I run an organization called Cohesion Plus, And I'll be talking to you about partnerships and how we're kind of embedded in the kind of community communities in the county of Kent, so where we are. So, about me first of all, I am a performer, and I still perform, I've done my first show in 1985, when many of you wouldn't have been born. But, so we're still going strong, got another booking on the weekend, so the knees are still there, I'm a dancer. So I perform Pangra dancing, you're late. Um, I performed Pangra dancing and we founded a, a dance company called 4x4, which is still going strong. And so we go out and do our stuff. And for those of you who may not be aware, Pangra dancing comes from North India, the, the Punjab, and that's where my um, parents come from. So, in terms of, point here, in terms of who we are and what we do, it's all right, he's a friend, I've just. So we were born at the Kent Equality Cohesion Council. So my work, although now it's primarily known through the arts, I CEO of a charity called the Kent Equality Cohesion Council, and we're there to provide help and support victims of hate crime, discrimination, the one-to-one -one support that is often needed and isn't something that is kind of celebrated on our social media accounts. We do a lot of work with the, the police. We do a lot of work with local authorities, the NHS. And that's what Cohesion Plus came out of. I had a very understanding boss and he was about to retire. We wasn't sure what was going to happen to our charity at the time. And he knew I had a passion for arts. And we set, set up Cohesion Plus basically as an arts organization. So at the moment, they all run parallel. So the Equality Council is still running. Plus we do, the, and that does the kind of one-to-one -one support. And whereas Cohesion Plus is the arts arm. Um, we're embedded in the local community. Someone who was born in the borough of Gratian, which is the most diverse area in Kent. It's a working class town, it's got a very high population from the Indian subcontinent particularly, a uh, very large Sikh community there, and that's where we are, and that's really where our kind of roots are. And when we do our events, we still try to work that kind of hyper-local level, working on, on a ward level, on a district level, working with schools, even on a street level. That's what our strength is. Even though as an organization we've grown, it's, for us it's about working in partnership and right at the heart of communities. Um, and obviously our big things around showcasing diverse art forms. But the main thing for me is also about using the arts to connect communities. So I had no background in the arts. My dad was a laborer, my mum was a housewife. A school project, we were very, I would say in my class, we must have been about 70% from the Indian subcontinent. And so the school started a, um, brought a dance group in. That's where my interest in the dance and the arts started. And if it wasn't for that passion, uh, you know, I had in the arts, it wouldn't have allowed me to do all the things that I've been able to do. So I'm really grateful to the arts, and I'm really grateful that you know, I was able to have that start. And the key thing is, is for us, is about working in partnership. As a small organization, we can't get things done on our own. So be it artistic partners, community partners, faith groups, local authorities. For us, it's all about partnership. As I'm about to move on to the next one, I was a little bit nervous in quick case what the next slide does. So fingers crossed, right. Now, okay, current roles. And what does, what has this got to do with Cohesion Plus and the arts? This is how we're embedded in that local community. This is how a lot of those doors and networks we've been able to develop. So I am something called a deputy lieutenant, which I was appointed this year. Now, there was a little bit of talk about empire, and I concur about empire and everything else. But a deputy lieutenant, for me, is, I find it a little bit ironic, and it's a great honor. I'm the first Sikh who's a deputy lieutenant in Kent. What it means is now, when I go to any event, Unless there's a member of the royal family there, I'm the highest ranking person there. So it's nice in a way, yeah? So I can turn up with my chain 
Yeah, and I'm there in essence representing the royal family. So I think it's quite nice that now the politicians have to bow to me and we don't have to speak to them. <laughs> um, I also do a lot of work with the police. So in terms of the kind of police crime panel or the advisory group, the work we do around prevent, uh, arts council, the counterterrorism, Kent ambassador, kind of work around the arts or NHS. The point is that's how we build those partnerships and links up. And that's why it's allowed us and as allowed myself, is a very, leading a very small organization to punch well above our weight. So we are very well networked within these kind of different kind of forums, which helps us with our work. Oops, kind of bit, right. So our focus, basically, in terms of the work we do around the arts, what we're trying to do, I said, very passionate about the fact that the arts has really given me an opportunity to do so much. And it's about making sure, you know, other children, uh, other families have the opportunity. And our focus primarily is in areas what, which are kind of deemed kind of low, areas of low engagement. And what you tend to find in Kent is those areas are also mirrored by the areas with the highest uh, uh, kind of diversity. So our focus through the work we try to do is around kind of equality, kind of diversity and inclusion. And that's what we try to champion through all our work. So it isn't just about a slogan for one day. This is what we do. So, St. George's Day, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the events that we do. So, St. George's Day, I've been doing this for about 10 years now, 10, 12 years. Some of my earliest memories is running home from school, being chased by, in those days, was the National Front. Or walking with my parents into town on a Saturday and being called the P word, the W word, and whatever else. That was. So, that, growing up in the 70s and 80s, when we used to look at the Union flag, the Union Jack, it was called then, or see the St. George's flag, it was owned by the far right. And for me, I've always been passionate that I'm English, I'm British, I'm Sikh, I'm Punjabi. Yeah, we've all got different identities, but I wanted to reclaim the flag back in just a small way. So we've been doing St. George's Day celebration about 10 years now in boroughs of Gresham and Dartford. And we celebrate St. George's Day. You'll have your brass bands, you'll have your Morris dancers, but you'll have Bhangra dancers, you'll have the djembe drums, you'll have the doll drums. That, for me, is about celebrating England in the context of now, or not without, any, you know, without being rude to anyone, you know, not in the context of, say, 1930, but in the context of 2023. And it's also a way of negating the message of the far right and making sure that that flag is for the majority and it's not for the, the minority. So that's something we're really proud of, and it's something that we've done and we will continue to do. We also do mellas. So we do mellas in, in one in Tunbridge Wells. We do one in uh, Maidstone. And they've been going for about 15, 15 plus years now. But it's, it's an opportunity for us to showcase art. And I've spoken to a number of uh, colleagues today, a number of artists. And for us, particularly diverse artists, it's really difficult to get work sometimes. It's really difficult. You're kind of seen as a niche that, okay, I've programmed everything. And, and, and we've had this as well. I mean, sometimes we still have this. That People will program a festival, and when they're down to, like, they've got a thousand pound left, and let's get a diverse act in. Yeah? Uh, you know, so we can tick that kind of box. And what we try to do is, through our work, we try to use it as a platform to showcase diverse artists. And, you know, that's something I'm really passionate about. Um, so, you know, if there are, obviously, particularly diverse-led organizations out there, please do reach out. It's an opportunity, I feel, for us to all kind of connect together. So we, we obviously do those medals, but... The way I do the medals, we, sell it, we do it in the context, again, not just about, although there's a theme celebrating art and culture on the Indian subcontinent, we also use it as an opportunity to celebrate local diversity as well. So it's an opportunity for local organizations, local arts companies to have a platform at these kind of big events. And that's me in the left there with my traditional Bhangra costume on. Another thing we've developed over the years is the, the winter kind of lantern parade. So people always feel that it's to do with Diwali. They'll say, oh, Govinda's organizing it. Must be a celebration of Diwali. Actually, for me, they were inspired by the Cultural Olympiad. And for me, there's light in all faiths. So it's an opportunity of using light to connect communities. Um, so we organize a, you know, a range of events. And again, it's an opportunity for us to showcase some of the Diverse artists we work with is an opportunity to showcase this, the diversity in particular areas. And for me, it's also about civic pride. So when we work in particular areas, the idea is about celebrating the pride 
of that particular area, celebrating the cultural Olympiad kind of ethos as well around, you know, kind of respect, tolerance, celebrating diversity. And it's something, again, we're really proud of, and it's kind of developed from one lantern parade to about five, and that's one of the reasons I'm rushing off soon as very shortly after I've finished speaking, because we're doing a big lantern parade tomorrow in Maidstone, um, which, which it, the county town of Kent, which is the first one we're doing in there, so we need to make sure it runs smoothly. Again, over the time, you know, try to utilizing our experience as a local group. So we, um, we work, for example, with Gratian Pride, and we work with colleagues there. So utilizing our experiences about organizing events, doing the risk assessments, you know, having the relevant insurances and everything else. So it's about sharing our knowledge with other partners. So for the last two years now, we've worked with Gratian Pride, and we've kind of helped program that, and also used that as an opportunity to showcase, again, some d diverse art forms through the Pride celebration. So, and it's also, what we found is, through our kind of involvement in our networks, is, it's also meant that people um, from some of the other diverse kind of ethnic minority communities are now attending those events because of the programming that, that we're doing. And that's what our work's about, working in partnership and bringing everyone together. Um, Black History Month, again, we use that, hopefully, in a, a way of bringing all communities together so we can share stories, we can understand, but also as an opportunity to showcase kind of diverse art forms out there. And I agree, and it's a philosophical conversations I've, I've had with many people that, you know, Black History Month, be it South Asian Heritage Month, they're not, you know, they're not, history exists every day of the year, and 100% agree, we are kind of where we are at the moment, but we try to use that in that positive light to again showcase it out. And again, the, the, the uh, Black History Month celebrations are developing along. Right, partnership working. For us, as a small organization, you know, there's many, many pros. It allows us to go out and do more than we could. So punch well above our weight. And, you know, be that partnerships with local authorities, be that community partners, be that faith organizations. But there are cons to it. There are cons to it. So, you know, and, and challenges, and for me, what, one of the things that we found is in terms of partnership working, sometimes familiarity can breed contempt as well. You can be working with people and there's just an expectation that you will deliver, not thinking about, particularly around finances and that financial imbalance can come in. Local authorities will sometimes want to will work with us, which is great, but they feel it's their event. So I... And most of the events that are kind of described, we are the majority funder. That's something I've worked towards. And the reason I work towards that is so I can have the final say. You know, I'm not at the whim of a politician. And I'm having a, I would call a philosophical discussion at the moment with one of our local authority partners where the event's going to cost about 20000 I've asked 5000 for them and we were going to give 15000 And they've come back with an offer of 3000 So my argument to them is that could I do the event without your three grand? Probably. Could you do it without my 15 grand? Probably not. And it's important for me that we've got clear ethos of what we want to do and we don't want to be stuck at the whims of politicians. So there's always that danger that can come. And that power imbalance is real. And trust me, I've had those conversations about, you know, there's only 20 logos on the flyer. You missed the 21st out. And that, that's a real thing. And, and you know, council officers or partners or politicians that get fixated on the most little thing of think, forgetting about what, what you're actually trying to achieve. So, so there are challenges there. But the benefits for me is the fact that by working in partnership, you get that sense of ownership. So we work across the county of Kent and we, wherever we're working, we will make sure we will work with the local community on the ground, create little steering groups, working groups to give that community that sense of ownership. I bring the experience I can bring that paperwork and my knowledge, but I can't, you know, I won't necessarily have that knowledge of that particular estate or that particular area. Uh, some areas are well, some areas are won't, and that's where you work locally, and you give that responsibility to the community. So when, for example, we do the Maidstone Miller, the local community we work with, it's their miller. They will go out and they will help champion, they will help promote it, they will help program it. And that's how we try to uh, work and move forward. So... Partnership working, yeah, I mean, this is obviously the ethos. Okay, so we have got something. So collaborate, uh, collaboration allows us to know more than we are capable of knowing by ourselves. And that, for me, is quite crucial. So we're talking about partnership working. I want you to be working in partnership with me now. So do you mind just standing up for a sec?
Right, so it's the post-lunch period, yeah? So there's always that danger of having a little bit of a slumber. My background's obviously in dance. Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to try one thing. So at the beginning, I said to you, Sasli Kal. So if you go to India, if you go to Pakistan, when you're saying hello to someone, you put your hands together like so, yeah? So we're going to spread some peace and love around the world. We're going to do a step which is called Around the World. I need someone to hold my mic. So, hands together like so, yeah? So we're going to clap. We're going to clap. One, two, three, four. I'm trying to see what can actually One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, I think the only thing that's missing is a drum. One, two, three, four. Thank you ever so much. That was partnership in action. Really pleased that we were able to be here. So it's Cohesion Plus. Feel free to find us on social media. Thank you. Thanks, Govinda. That's great. That's great. That's what we like. Um, and with the St. George's thing, there's that brilliant picture of uh, you've got someone playing St. George. I'm, I'm going to assume Punjabi artist. And it's a wonderful image. I use it all the time. It's actually, this is, belongs outdoors. And reclaiming the flag. It takes me back to how I felt about the Olympics, where we finally could... Take some pride in the Union Jack. Ugh, enough of that. Right, right, we're back to some more quick pitching, opportunity pitching. Right, super, super quick. We're, yeah, we're, we're getting back on track. Oh, I've completed my steps. That's good. Great. <laughs> Longest move streak. There we go. Isn't that good to know? Right, uh, Sarah Bird is going to come up first. Sarah, also a board member. Very nice to see you. Uh, formerly of Wild Rumpus and now of Outside CPP. You're kind of representing the whole of the CPP Creative People and Places projects, aren't you? <laughs> On your own. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm eight weeks into the job, so you guys probably know more about CPPs than I do. But um, there are 39 creative people and places projects across the country, uh, mostly happening in places where there is uh, historically less funded arts and cultural activity and engagement. Um, and yeah, so we've got a new one set up called Outside in the Staffordshire Moorlands. Um, it's we're going to be doing stuff outside, helpfully, um, but also outside of the urban centres of power. The thing about the Staffordshire Moorlands is it's super rural. There are 44 small village halls. There are three small market towns. And so we're working in a really rurally engaged way. So we're really interested to talk to people who are interested in working in that kind of rural landscape. Uh, we'll be doing loads of outdoor stuff. We've got the Peak District um, National Park as part of our patch. Um, we're super interested in projects with tractors. If anyone's got any cool projects with tractors going on. Um, and uh, loads of community engagement work. So uh, come and talk to us. We don't have a website yet, but we will do soon as we get our act together. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in doing rural stuff in the Staffordshire Moorlands, uh, my email's on the delegate list somewhere. So come and talk to us. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Much appreciated. Um, next up, I've got Garth. Let's do one. Garth's going to talk to us about NASA's For the Love of It coming up in April. Hello, uh, I'm Garth Williams from Safety Catch. Thank you. Don't worry, it's on. 
uh, and from NASA UK, which is the National Association of Street Artists. Some of you will know, some of you will be members. If you haven't heard of us, check it out. It's nasauk.org. And we run an annual event called FLOI, which stands for... Thank you. For the love of it, which is sort of the flip side of this event. It's not about the business side of things. It's not about trying to get gigs or network in that sense. It's about re-inspiring yourselves and reconnecting with why you make work. It's um, almost like being at a gig with all your other artist mates that you normally get to say, oh, nice to see you, sorry, I've got to go and perform now, but the gig's been canceled and they've said, have the venue, have a weekend, here's some great food cooked by Jeremy Shine. So you get to hang out and, and do that thing you never get to do in a green room, uh, but for a whole weekend. So everybody contributes something, you do uh, an offer of something from running a workshop in some bizarre skill that you happen to have as a party trick. I'm looking at Pete Gunson here, who did workshops in, in whistling with your hands and playing the spoons the same weekend, two of my favorite workshops. <laughs> and then you can also, um, if you don't feel like running a workshop, you can help by laying the table. And another big aspect of it is that we eat together and we share together. So. I really highly inspire you, hopefully, to, to look into it. It's uh, nasauk.org forward slash Floy. It'll be all over our social media. No, we just put it out this week. We had to change the dates quite late in the day. It's now mid-April and at 101 Outdoor Arts, which many of you will know. And if you don't, uh, come on down. It's, a, it's a, a friendly riot, but a very friendly one. OK, Thank thanks very much. Thank you. It is a friendly ride, I've been, and the food is great. There's no question about it. Phil from uh, Bradford, back for more? Oh, no. Okay, okay. He was going to talk about uh, the Bradford is Lit commissions, which have just come out. John from Belfast 2024, how are we doing there? Hello, John, sorry, going to say, hi, nice to meet you. And <laughs> let's have you having a pitch. Danny, you're the... Oh, uh, okay, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, it's great to be in Bradford. My name is John McElduff. I'm creative lead for a program, um, a year-long program that will be happening in Belfast in 2024. Um, we're looking for to develop partnerships with people specifically in the outdoor art and people working in public art, um, in public realm, because that's what the center of this program will be. Um, so if you're interested in building a relationship with Belfast, um, exploring what a partnership with uh, Belfast, um, Ireland could look like, uh, please get in contact. We have an open call at the minute that's open. Um, it's open until the beginning of March. You'll find all the information on a website, but probably easiest is to catch me later on for a moment if you want to have a chat, or get in contact with myself. The email is in the list. Um, yeah, I'll leave it there. I'll make that really short. Brilliant. Thanks for sharing that. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you for coming so far as well. And Daniel, are you going to, you're going to, Tracy's taking a back seat. You're going to come and talk about uh, High Street Sand Emergency Exit Arts. Thank you very much, Daniel. I'm clearly no replacement for Tracy, but she wasn't feeling so well. Um, I'm going to talk uh, Emergency Exit Arts. I'm assuming you might know, but if not, do come and visit us in the market stall. We've been going 42, 43 years. Um, we have been developing a project with Historic England for the last two years, which is touring around heritage action zones. Hands up if you've got a heritage action zone in your town. Okay, there's a few. There's a few. Basically, in 70 places across England, Historic England are, help, are putting money into the buildings in those high streets, but they've also put some money to develop kind of ground up uh, coalitions of different people interested in putting on events and arts, cultural activity in the high street. So I think it's a really great initiative from, from uh, Historic England. We've got the commission to take a piece uh, round next, sorry, this coming summer, which is going to be touring around six of those uh, high streets. But basically, and the idea is we're trying to leave a legacy. So we're kind of building and developing a carnival troupe with a street band in each of those places and developing community producers in each of those places so that hopefully 
when we when we've when we've finished the tour those high streets and those places will continue to have a group of people who are putting things on in the high street so that's the that's the aim of it all so if you've got a high street if you're interested in that sort of longer term development uh, or if you're interested in anything else then do come and see us we've got a little market stall at the end of the end of the row thank you Brilliant. thank you daniel and phil has just been whisked into the cathedral you're going to give us a quick quickie on yeah Sorry, um, I was just at the market. Um, the actual market stall. Um, uh, we run a festival as part of the program in Bradford called BD is Lit. Um, it's a festival of light. It's about using light to light up places and unusual, explore unusual spaces. There is a commission call out currently which closes tomorrow. There is no time on it, so it finishes just before. So like 11.59 p.m. tomorrow night. Um, so any of that come for at midnight, I'm so sorry. Um, that's a joke. Um, so yeah, uh, it's a great opportunity, up to 15K uh, on the commissions. Uh, it's in partnership with 2025, the Media Museum, and the LEAP, the Creative People and Places program. Um, if you have projects that are over the 15K mark and you are then going to raise other funds or find other partners and get Arts Council funding. That is totally cool as well. I understand 15K cannot make everything, but it's there. Apply. It's wonderful. Thank you. Sorry I'm late. All right. Right, you've done your time earlier. Thanks, Phil. Great. Uh, right, so get that in, in. I love those 11.59s. It's when I send every application is 11.59 as well. Usually when the, the deadline's midday. I so often got that wrong. Right, brilliant. Thank you very much. Our opportunity pictures. I think that's a useful thing to do. I like that. There, and it's great just to feel all the different things going on. So we're going to press on with our partnerships narrative. And firstly, uh, I'm next going to, well, firstly, I'm next going to bring up Pete from PiffPath. Very nice to see you, Pete. Uh, see you again, having been up already. You on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's cool. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Um, I have been asked to talk about partnership uh, in the context of neighborhoods work that we've been doing, which has involved. Oh, I need a clicker. Crikey. Yeah, I, I don't know what picture we're on there. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, hang on. Oh, the photos are out of order. Don't you love it? Are they numerically? That's the second. Sorry. Um, <laughs> one of the, you learn from partners. That's the point of partnerships, I think. And one of the first things I learned from one of the partners uh, right up our street is that CPPs work a lot on a principle called action research, which is where you learn by doing and making mistakes is fine. And is everyone up for being part of a piece of action research? got to be really quick. Are you going to be really quick and do exactly what you're told? If you listen, someone's going to win this. Right, everyone on their feet, please. Does everyone know how to play scissor, paper, stone? Find a partner. Hands up if you haven't got a partner. And if you can't stand, say sat, that's fine. Who's not got a partner? Find a partner. We've got, someone needs a partner here. The man with the ponytail. Okay, we've got to move on. Okay. Three... It's scissor, paper, stone, shoot. Oh, I got scissor, paper, with that lady there. Oh, scissor, paper, stone, shoot. Right, the least winny person out of that, sit down. Find another partner. Whoever lost, you've got to sit down. Find another partner. Who's gone? There's a beef going on here. If you lost, sit down. Find another partner. Do it again. Have you done it already? Do it again. Have you, have you lost, sit down, find another partner? She's not going to sit down. You're not giving up. How are we doing? Yeah, knock it out. We want people sitting down. Have we got, we got, how are we down? We're down to the semis. They're just running on. We got... Camille's just lost down the back there. Yeah, we've got a winner for a month, Artemis. Who are we doing? Who's left standing? Rowan Cannon. Anyone willing to take her on? Yeah, okay, we've got Artemis going to take on Rowan Cannon. Who's left standing? Who's left standing? Over there, we've got some hardcore. Just do it. Play to the death. 
Oh, you lost that. Here we go. Amta. Who's left standing at the back? Have we got, we got one standing here. Amta, take that lady on. Who, what have we got going on in the back over there? Anyone left on their feet? Oh. Right, we want with the finals on the stage. We got a final here. We got a final up on the stage. Okay, do it down there. What are your names? We got Jane from Daisy Arts versus. Oh, are you, are you still standing? No, no, there's no, there's no giving up now. Okay, we want Rachel versus Natasha. Rachel versus Natasha. And they went. No, and then so which leaves? Who won that? Jane versus Natasha. Well, you cheated, but you lost anyway. <laughs> Natasha. That's courtesy of our subs. Right, better get right. <laughs> okay, so I better hurry up then, probably. Um, uh, hello, I'm Piff Paff. We, um, we were asked a while ago to, we were 2021, out of the blue, we were asked to make a show for neighborhoods. It was COVID. You couldn't do events and bring people to events. None of us are the kind of people to sit on our bums and do nothing. And so Stellar Projects, Rachel and Lindsay, and Red Car in Cleveland um, Council asked us to make a project for December that goes along the streets and in four neighborhoods. And so we thought about that as Piff Paff, and Piff Paff is myself, Pete Gunson, Eleanor Hooper, who's here. I've got a background in engineering and um, apprentice through IOU, which came out of Welfare State, which came out of Bradford, so that's very exciting. And Eleanor's got a background in sort of circus and fine art and theatre. And we, we meld these things together. I was going to introduce our work slightly. That's one of our shows, which is Seed, which is a man, a rockabilly and narco nomad fighting slugs. That's another one of our shows, Fly School and Summer Cycle, where people go for rides and make up stories and dress up. I'm going, yeah. Oh. Uh, that's another one of our shows, Toast, where we take people on a journey around the world through, and the seasons through song, dance, and batter-based treats. So we cook them pancakes and feed them coffee. That's a without walls show, it's very serious art. Um, and we play live music, uh, which, or which we, songs we learn from people around the world in Sheffield, which has all been a very beautiful project to do. And that's toast again. Another strand of what we do is light art, so mixing tech and design and Eleanor's sort of developing music practice, and this is a, the Celestial SoundCloud we've been doing for a few years, which is interactive uh, sound and light samples. And, and the latest piece we're working on, which is going to premiere outdoors at Oldham, is The Sunshine on the Fallen Tree, where another soundtrack from Eleanor and Kate Griffin mixes with steam bent ash lights. We're trying to make a sustainable light sculpture. And you can't really see, but this is a project we made for. Um, for stellar projects. So we thought about the brief, neighborhoods, what does that mean? You're not in an event, you're going to people's houses, it's nighttime, it's winter, the curtains are drawn. So we thought a lot about the pace that we'd need a show to be at, the scale, we thought about light, we thought about sound, and we thought about the length and the rhythm of the interaction. So we sort of designed the show around this brief of neighborhoods. Now at the time you'll notice, we cut, that is a tricycle, um, with a DJ booth and a mirror ball inside it. And these two, we thought to ourselves, what's the simplest we can make this? What animal likes light? Moths like light. And what do moths like? They like light bulbs. So we made a light bulb with two moth electricians. And we were collecting lights from people's houses around the four areas around Redcar. And the ruse was that London had messed up their lights and we needed to get the good vibes and the Christmas lights from the northeast. And people, it went down really well. This is, we were going right to people's doors. A lot of people have been really, had been locked up inside for a year. And um, it was very gratifying. And people were talking to their neighbors. We'd go down the street and people, you could see people on their phones and opening their windows and coming out and playing, just playing with us. Um, and that was very successful. And then we thought, where can we take it from there? And this is where partnerships come in. So we went back to Sheffield. And again, the hustle that um, uh, Laura, Lorna was talking about earlier, as artists, you have to make things happen. 
you don't wait for them to happen. And so we went and approached local partners in our area, so that's creative people and places right up our streets, and a housing association. So that's a good partner to try and tap up. They're not used to paying normal touring fees, but they're great big organizations who are used to reach, they're very people-centric, so that's a potential partner. And then also we work with um, Barnsley Counts, the events team there, and they saw the value of reaching out. And we didn't ask for a lot of money. We got a few hundred pounds from each partner, but we used that as leverage, uh, as match for an Arts Council project grant. And, and then we found the first big error of what we've done is, although we'd worked in partnership with Sammy Gab, the production manager, to do the work going around neighborhoods, I'd forgot to check with our insurers about performing <coughs> on a road in the dark without a road closure. And although the SAGs had said it was fine, the safety advisory group, the insurer said, we don't care how many rhinestones you've got on your high-vis jacket, you're not doing it. So <laughs> we then had to pivot and very quickly make this, which the moths also like moons. So we made a moon that, on a stick which goes up and down and goes literally around pavements. It can go through the tiny gaps between a parked car and a dog poo and navigate streets. And we just larked it. There was a lot of work to get to this point. And I don't want to underplay that. We wrote reams of documents. And somewhere there's a slide of reams of documents. There it is. All of these documents are open source. We're really up for sharing all of these. We're really aware of a lot of this work we could have done without jumping through all these hoops. But part of the process was about making the councils understand that this is a normal thing to do and that we've got a right to do this. So we went through all these grind, hopefully to prepare the ground a bit for other people. So please, please ask if you like the sound of what I'm talking about for all of these reams of documents. Um, and so we did it. We did that one year, and then we went back to our partners. Now, someone asked, so how much money do you actually get off people? So it's a few hundred quid the first year. Now, this year, all our partners said it's okay to say we're working with Flux, the CPP, right up our street at CPP and Barnsley Council again. They each put in two and a half thousand pounds for which they got four um, mile long routes, which we went and recce I went and recceed. And we do sort of two hour long sets. And there's a real sweet spot between three and 6 p.m. which sort of drifts, but people are at home, people are coming home, people are just going out to walk their dogs, they're not quite in the bath. And we've been touring like this week and next week around areas in Rotherham, Doncaster, and Barnsley. And in Sheffield, we've got no partners, because they don't seem to care. Someone probably does. But, um, so this is us on one of our own routes. We just said we want to go to these certain areas in Sheffield with really marginalized communities, and it really clicks, and people hang out their upstairs windows. People chat to us as we walk along. And again, it's a political act of saying to of trying to say to families and groups that it's good that crazy things happen outside your house. You don't have to go into town. A lot of people don't go into town. This is, oh. I don't know what she's saying to us there. <laughs> but you have really great, you're just playing with people, which is the root of what we do. Um, and different communities come out on the streets in different ways. And we've learned there's a big Roma communities around South Yorkshire, which we sort of live around that area, and it's really interesting. That, all right, this is, an, this is a project that's going to connect with people. That's very exciting. And where do we go from that? This is some photos that Sally was taking in Doncaster. It was very, very joyful. What's the next stage of action research? On Saturday, in two days' time, we're doing a neighborhood event in our local area, a bit of asset-based community development. Three scratch-built community bands. It was going to be two, but there's an adults and the juniors. But then we had to make a minis, which I think there's a photo of somewhere. Oh, no, there isn't. How, what happened, this is pavement-based art. The councils didn't get it, they do now. There's no street closure, it's not a parade. Can you get a samba band of 13 young people and safely and enjoyably march them around their own neighborhoods? The adult street band is definitely going to continue. The junior ones hopefully will, will as well. Um, and that's just a summary of that. Sorry, I'm garbling a bit. It's been really exciting, and it's been very quick and very action research. Uh, I would very much encourage anyone who wants to take work to people where they live to do it. Ask us for advice. Thank you very much. You prepared the advice, didn't you? We, we, we have an hour. Oh, God, that's what I meant to say as well. 
supported by Outdoor Arts UK, last year, um, Angus very and, and the team supported us to create a document. We're not the only people doing this. Thank you, I meant to say that. Matt Pang, Dan Fox, Serco Rambaba, Lynn Routledge, um, and and just Corvus, Corvus Angelicus down in Bristol. Loads of people have been doing this. We tried to collate some of these ideas to hopefully inspire people, and there's a document on the Outdoor Arts UK website, and it will be updated, hopefully, to talk about this sort of asset base, sort of getting the materials of an area, building some social fabric, and um, having a lot of fun. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for... Uh, playing Scissor Paper Stone with us. Hi, Jennifer. Hello. Look at that, just like that. You can lean on this if you are. You're going you're yeah. to be up there. It's not quite a bar stool. It's, it's no, apparently... I I'll let you do it's perfect size for playing a certain organ okay. in this church. So it, you, you, you can lean. Um, so, look, uh, you're, you're going to chat for a bit, and then we're going to have a little bit of in conversation. Yeah. So, thanks to Pete. <laughs> Neighbourhoods, small, stuff on the doorstep, amazing. I'm going to talk to Jennifer about... Bigger stuff, but actually it's got so much in common, hasn't it? Uh, including the Jubilee. So do you want to just start with a little bit about yourself then? Is that where we're going to head? Sorry, I'm taking the mic. Sorry, I'm all over the place. And That's okay. Show goals, show goals, yeah. Okay. Oh, you're doing it on there? I'll you're try. No, no, I'm not actually. I'm doing it like that. So, um, yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, first of all, I just want to uh, say that my presentation is not what I expected it to be today because my lovely, lovely mum and queen um, fell ill a couple of days ago, the very day that I planned to finish off my presentation and I just, my brain just went blank. So um, I sent a message to Angus and said, it may not happen or it may be Zoom or it may be something. And Angus kindly said, just come along, we'll do a Q&A and we'll make it happen. So thank you very much for that. And also, I felt terrible, you know, as you do when someone you love falls ill. So last night's dancing was a blessing. It was healing. And thank you very much, everyone who got on that dance floor and the rest of you who didn't get on the dance floor and just held the space in this magical, magical space. Uh, it was brilliant and it really helped me. So thank you. Um, so, yeah, working in partnership. I'm Gina for Jean Charles and... Um, I'd like to just talk to you a little bit about how I started. So in, uh, uh, for about 10 years, I ran my own company called Bullies Ballerinas. Um, that's my friend in the forefront of the photograph. And I would say that's probably my first experience of what I would call a partnership. So when, when um, Angus asked me about partnership, I thought, right, let's think about partnership. I, I think I started thinking about it as something where you're equal, you, you both bring something to the table, and um, you're committed, and um, yeah, and you have different strengths. So for Pearl and I, um, I was all into the accounts and, and the dancing. Uh, we were both into that. And she was very much into the choreography. She was very much into, it's got to be pure jazz. And, um, and I, I suppose, as, with a, a teaching background, I was very much into, it's got to be ex accessible to all. And I would say that was a 10-year partnership and very, very successful. My only regret is that we saw that partnership as our baby. And then 10 years later, when Pearl had a baby, it just felt like her, her, her focus was somewhere else. And we decided to just fold the company, which is a shame, really, because I didn't have the energy to run it on my own and couldn't find anyone else who would want to commit or we didn't ask. So that went, on, you know, that went to bed. And um, I just then you know, began to work as a freelancer. And today, this is a snippet of who I am today and the sort of work I do. Do I just press? Yeah, hopefully. Oh, I, I went too far back. Is it you or me? Yeah, great. Thank you. Oops. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> yeah. I suppose I could just go forward and, uh, oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I suppose, yeah. In around t 2005, I met a coach 
And at the end of that um, year, she, uh, when I met this coach, she said, what do you want to do? And I just said, what I'd really love to do is to turn my, my, my world around. So at the moment, 25% of it is creative. The other 75% is admin, and I want to turn it around. And she said, how long? And, and somehow, I landed... Um, a, the big dance on Trafalgar Square because when they were looking for f loads of choreographers, I said, hang on a minute, who's going to actually manage all these choreographers? My ego's not that massive. I reckon I can do it. And that actually started off my, my outdoor arts experience. And I'm really, really pleased to say around that time, I met Bradley um, from festival.org and GDIF, if, if that's how you might know the organization, who produced that big dance on Trafalgar Square. Around the same time, I, I met Ali Pritty from Connecticut, who then introduced me to Liz Pugh from Walk the Plank and John. And I'd say that has been a quite an amazing journey. And those three organizations, Connecticut, Walk the Plank and Festival.org, have been major players in a, a lot of the large-scale work I have, I have done. And when I think about relationships, I guess I think uh, sorry, think of partnership. I think relationships. I think that's the important thing. A lot of, uh, uh, you know, there's a big focus now on social media and Facebook, and I still stick to face to face. I think that is the most important thing. Go and talk to people. I think that's how we build partnerships. We talk to people. We, 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 we I start with listening to what you know, people's dreams and their hopes and what they would want to do, what's, what's on their mind, what would they like to do. And I spend time listening to that, and then I respond. And then if we're lucky and it aligns, then perfect. If not, it was just great to hear other people's visions. That's how I see partnership. Wish them well, and we just keep going on our journey. So it's these roads, and sometimes we meet, sometimes we part, and sometimes we come back together again. So this is um, some of the highlights from, yeah, my last 10 years, I suppose, or more. Thank you. She has such a vivid imagination about how dance can work on screen. Jennifer was the obvious choice to work on this project. My first commission with her was for Big Dance 2006 in Trafalgar Square actually having Jennifer come in and work with us is going to be really interesting for us. She has a way of getting each person to create themselves, take risks and try things out. Thank you. So that's just some of the highlights, I'd say, over the last, yeah, 15 years. Um, what, what's really interesting for me is how you, you know, how you, you, you're in a place. So, for example, in Big Dance in 2006, just being in that space where really I felt that big dance for me, 44 different dance groups dancing to one piece of music and breaking a record. For me, that was um, the, the biggest highlight in my career because up to then, I was that unsexy person called a community dancer. And, um, and I, was, I just felt that I was never taken seriously. And, and with that, that, that head in teaching and wanting to always work with communities, I was just finding that there was, just, you know, the val there was no value to my work. It wasn't being valued. And it wasn't until 2006 when the mayor's office decided they wanted to, to do this world break, record breaker and bring it to Trafalgar Square, I was able to really, really show off the sort of work I do 
um, with communities. And um, some of the people who I worked with, like Natasha Kamjani from Folk Dance Remix, um, was with me on that journey, which was, which was fantastic. What was really lovely was a, a producer on, on, the, on, the, on the gig said, look, Jennifer, what you've just been doing, you know, people do it around the world. And the Li Olympics is coming up. So, you know, perhaps you should consider that. And I just thought, well, how do you do that? And I would say, again, it, if it wasn't for the organizations and the people I built relationships with, like Bradley and Liz and Ali and several others, East London Dance at the time, um, I would not have got to the Olympics, and I'm really pleased to say I did, um, and worked on all four of the London um, 2012 ceremonies as a mass movement coordinator. Sometimes people introduce me as, this is Gina for the choreographer for the Olympics. No, that's, you know, that wasn't possible. But um, to be part of that creative team was quite amazing. So, the, you know, some of these images, I would say, are, are, are the, the journey to getting to where I wanted to go. And it, was, it really was about building relationships from the big dance and moving forward. So I just want to go on to, um, yeah, my journey uh, for black Victorians, which is something I've just been touring recently. Um, in 2018, Angus invited me to talk about the power of the, of the possible. At that point, I arrived here I think it was Glasgow, we think it was Glasgow, and um, handed out leaflets saying black Victorians. It was just really an idea. I had uh, discovered these hidden portraits of black people during Victorian times, which I didn't realize existed. It touched me personally, and I just thought, all of Britain should know about this, these hidden stories and see these portraits because they're fantastic. And I, I remember just, I think I had an opportunity to pitch. I was at the marketplace and I had no idea who would be my partner then, but I just talked to anyone who would listen. What actually unfolded, and I spoke to people here in this room who supported me, what actually unfolded was... Um, Oh, I'll put that on pause for a while, go back a little bit. So what, 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 um, the, the way it happened was looking for partners. So I went to Polly Risbridger at the time was working with East London Dance. And she said, oh, perhaps you should meet someone at Historic Royal Palaces. It was 2018. I met this person in 2018 and he said, actually 2019 is the, uh, we're celebrating Queen Victoria. So if you wanted to, do some R&D and see if your idea with these portraits has any legs. We've got funding. We can fund you for an R&D. So I did five days of R&D, presented it to the Department of Historical Palaces, Kensington Palace, Hampton Court. They thought this has legs, and they gave me another five days of, of R&D. And that's how my black Victorians began. Now, then the pandemic hit and then everything fell off the table. And then I thought, oh, you know, what, what am I going to do? And then I got this call from Bradley saying, Jennifer, fancy doing an outdoor, socially distanced, work in progress piece of black Victorians. I said, yes, no, yes. And then, and then actually the rest is history because that is how black Victorians became um, a reality. And, and I would say, again, it was about relationships. And this next um, film is, about, if we could play that film, that would be fantastic. Just shows where I got to and it tells you a bit about that piece. This piece was inspired by an exhibition of black people in portraits um, hidden for over a hundred years. And I thought as a choreographer, that's my next piece. In school, I only learned about a white Britain. So to be able to kind of go back and re-educate myself, I feel very privileged to be able to do that now. Really excited to pass on that knowledge. There's a theme that's been uh, in our history of uh, names being forgotten and a lot of our history has been forgotten. So I feel like it's a privilege to take these stories and uh, give them some form of representation, whether it's through live performance, uh, photography, film. This is also uh, British history as well, which I'm a part of because I was born here. In terms of the pandemic itself and what we had to do differently, it was just remove duets, remove any close group work and just find a way of still telling the stories. In the rehearsal period, we've had to keep one meter distance apart, so the choreography slightly changed. Luckily, we've managed to do that. You're pulling on costumes, you're trying things out, 
and here now we're not supposed to actually go near each other so it's it's a weird dynamic at the moment so many things got cancelled and postponed to be able to be back and performing is just means a lot to me really important to be able to have my performance here at Greenwich and Docklands International Festival. It's been going for 25 years. I have been involved in it at several stages over those years. I'm really glad that it's my work that I'm, you know, people are coming to see this year. It's interesting that this is at such a time when Black Lives Matter is at the forefront of everybody's mind. It just makes my piece even more important than even I thought it was, and that's a good thing. Thank you. And I've got the logos up. Pete, you're talking about logos. I've got the logos up. I'm going to keep them up now because these were my partners, as well as the people who are not there. Their logos are not there, but would listen to me, would give me time and, and sit and have a chat over coffee and, and, and tell me, yeah, this is possible. This is fantastic. This is who you should speak to. And that's how I have managed to build partnerships. And uh, I just want to say, yeah, it's been very, very exciting. Uh, did you want to ask me some questions? <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, the Queen's Jubilee. So um, I got a call, like many artists did, thanks to the list you gave <laughs> to Adrian. And um, when I got this call, it was at first, wow, yes, I'll get involved. And I thought, what, what do I really want to do in this event? Because it's a global event, and I really want to present my true self. So to cut a long story short, when I finally was asked, could I do a piece about key workers and work in partnership with Kinetica on, with key workers, I thought, yeah, that's it, because that's me. That's me. I, you know, I understand key workers. I felt like a, a key worker myself during the pandemic looking after my mum. And it was, it was just really important to bring these people out into on the mall and to celebrate them and also i really wanted an opportunity to ensure that if the world was going to look at britain that they saw a really really diverse britain and so i was able to add voice to this already actually diverse event and um yeah felt very very proud to have taken part actually because of that um when a lot long Mwekapale, sa langsala se patwa. Mwevle sav kimanye. Mwe paka jeme pale langsala. When ni a lot muna di damwe. Kote mun sala e ben. What I've just said is, I want to find out why I don't speak this patwa, the language that my mum gave me. I never speak it. It's just hidden inside me. And sometimes I feel that there's another person, that hidden voice. I think that's my next piece. And I'm going to be looking for partners. That's it. <laughs> I did. Why not? Why not? We are rapidly uh, coming to the end of the presentation section, uh, but we would like to uh, celebrate a little bit of Outdoor Arts UK. It's our turn to pitch, uh, but I'm kind of not going to do it because you've heard enough from me. And I'm, he's been sat here the whole time, so it's first time at, at conference. Our new general manager, David Doust, who's been so good on IT all day, thank you very much, <laughs> is going to talk to you a little bit about Outdoor Arts UK. And uh, I think you're, you're on. 
Hello everyone, can you hear me? A particular hello to everyone that was on the dance floor last night. Um, if you'd have told me um, a week ago that I'd be in a cathedral dancing to House of Pain's Jump Around uh, with a lot of key people in my sector, I would have been very, very surprised. So I'm going to talk very, very briefly about OA UK and um, some of the membership benefits that we're working on and developing. Uh, and I wanted to talk about it in the spirit of community. Uh, I wanted to quickly kind of echo something Angus said this morning about the thank yous to the minibus drivers, to Daryl, to Ivan, to Robin, to Alan, to Kerry, for getting everyone here, to everyone that put your names on a car share spreadsheet. When we came up with that, we had 24 hours to suddenly kind of rewrite our entire travel plan of how to get people here. When people started adding their names to the car share spreadsheet, I was like visibly in tears in the office going, it's working, it's working, the people are doing it because we just had no idea. And that, that pull together was so amazing to be part of. So thank you everyone so much. So, so on that, one of the amazing things that we get to do is we get to be national, but we also get to be local. And so we're developing a membership map. So anyone that's a member, sorry, I've just realized people over here that I can't see you. Um, so anyone that is a member is going to be added to our membership map. It's an interactive map. And what I love about this image is that I had to crop it to get our one French member in. So as one French company that's a member of OA UK, technically meaning we're international, uh, I'm counting it. It means I get to tell my mum we're an international organization, uh, and she's very proud of that. Um, but yeah, so it's an interactive map. This is currently about one third of the membership on here. So part of my job will be adding people, adding established members, adding members that uh, are joining us. Every time someone joins, I manually add them to this, which is a really fun process for me because it gets, means that I get to see where you all are. Uh, and what's lovely about it is you suddenly get to go, oh, you're here and you're next to this person. Uh, and one of the things we get to do is put people together and build partnerships. And we get to say, oh, did you know that such and such is just down the road from you? Um, and it's lovely. And again, it, it kind of pulls our focus nationally. It's also really interesting to see where there aren't people uh, as much as where there are. Uh, and we get to pull them together. And just a quick zoom in. So when you click on one of them, uh, you get this. Um, that's me. Oh, hilarious. Um, that's me. I'm one of our very few Dorset members. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Southwest represent. Um, yeah, so this is just a lovely little thing that we've been working on. They also link to your membership directory pages. So mine doesn't directly, but anyone else's, if you click on it, it pulls you through to your directory page. So it's a really lovely interactive way of finding out where people are and who they are. Back over to you, Angus. And there are many more besides, but I've always wanted a map, and David's made it a reality. So thank you, David. And for so much more, especially if you're on your first conference and all the ups and downs we've had with where well, we're going to do it, even a few weeks ago. So that's amazing. Thank you, David. And David has hold, a whole new system for uploading members and getting those directory pages, and so that's who you'll be dealing with, and it's great. Well, it's changed a lot of that. Right. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, what we're doing now. So open forum topics. So number one will be consent culture in public spaces and with audiences in live work. That's just one topic in, uh, in session number one. Session number two, longer term community co-creation and development. How do we do this? Second uh, question will be why is there always an emphasis to support for creating only new work? Who actively supports the developing the development of deepening established works? I second this smiley face. So uh, essentially, so we've got consent culture, session number one, longer term community co-creation and development, and emphasis, why is the emphasis on supporting new work? They are in the clock tower. So that's what we're doing there. Uh, the next bit that is in here after our break is going to be the speed meetings. They are really unscary. You'll, our producers and programmers will be given a little card. They'll write their name on and people will go around and say hello. Simple as that. Really nice, really brief. Came largely from when we do our festival focus um, uh, events. Uh, all the producers are really good at, at, at spending some time with the cohort. So it's a sort of slightly extended version of that. Um, our Q&As are in the Light Church, which is, if you go out of the side door, up the path, it's literally over the road. So our Q&As are there, chaired by members of the board uh, there. And uh, then our second session here, we've got, tw I, uh, when last looked, we had 21 idea pitches, so that's like a couple of minutes each. And that'll be in here, just grab the mic, two minutes, I've got a show, I've got a venue, I've got an idea. That's what it'll be, nice and simple. Please double check the times you've booked in for your Arts Council one-to-ones um, and make sure you, they're really strict 20 minutes, not strict, but you know, they're, they're, they're tight, 
they're tight 20 minute slots, so please make sure you get to those. Um, I think that's, that's all. All we're doing. That's all we're doing. Right. Um, that's, that's the... Uh, and, of course, the marketplace. Please go back to the marketplace. Spend some time in the marketplace. And the bar will be open. Hoorah. Uh, and uh, so what I now want to... So we're going to... This is going to be the last time we're as a group together. So I'll just take a little moment to thank our speakers and for so running with the partnership theme. That was great. So many different examples, so many different scales, such amazing tenacity. So many of those stories did refer to what I was talking to at the beginning about Brexit, about COVID, about working together, about hyperlocal, about massive scale. All of those embrace those different, different types of outdoor work. And despite all that gets thrown at us, you know, we are, we are somehow able to deliver, and that's incredible. But those narratives have told that so beautifully today. So I'm, I'm very grateful to all those speakers. And for, yeah, pretty much, we're pretty much sticking to time as well. That's always a winner. Um, and uh, so I'd like also to thank, because um, last night, Davinda and the Punjabi Roots, uh, they, they, they kind of led the way. Also to Cecil Green, of course, for the beautiful ball that has become our symbol, and for their fairies, and for the People Powered Press, which is still over there, uh, and for Born Fable for doing, doing the catering. That was, you know, it was, it was a very nice and somewhat surprising night. These are the thank yous going in the bin now. There we go. Um, I would like to thank our board, um, who have been supporting us on this here today and in advance, particularly uh, we had Lorna and Alan and Lou Lomas working with us on the ideas and how we shaped uh, the narrative of this. Uh, but generally, I'd like to thank them. Now, we've had a funny thing with the board. Some of those board members who are there have never been to a live board meeting, as people have never met each other in person till today. So it's been a nutty situation. And, and we've, had, we've missed elections because we couldn't have, um, we couldn't have proper meetings. So we're going to have a little refresh. And it's time for a refresh, and we're going to... Uh, just do a nice timetable now that the conference is done. And I would like just to say, it, one of the big things about uh, OA UK is that the board is largely elected by the membership, and so we need people to stand. Lorna Reese has been fantastic as being sort of the sole independent artist. I would really like a few more artists to stand, um, if I can put that out there, so that we have a little bit more of a balance in, in the board. Um, they're all very generous about that, but it, no, it, it would be nice to have a little bit more of that. Anyway, that will be, in the next couple of months or so, we will have some places there. And we're just having a little restructuring about, we'd like to be able to co-opt some um, people who aren't necessarily in the sector to advise us as well. Have a little board refresh. Um, I will say we did get excellent on our, our board in our MPO application. Just saying that. Um, so it's a good board to be on. Um, so we'd like to see lots of artists. Um, I'd like to thank Bradford, generally speaking. I would really like to thank Bradford Cathedral for taking all this on board. Fantastic. You've made your pitch for 2025. Yeah. We may have felt a little bit ungodly, but I think we were very reverential in our joy. Absolutely. Uh, and, and of course, uh, Bradford Council, uh, via Phil particularly, have been a great supporter, and Bradford 2025, how brilliant to be part of the early days of that. And our other venues, Kalasangam, what a great art centre. It's re I love that so much was still going on. It was like, oh, well, there's a dance class. Okay. Thought we could set up. No, nope, no, nope, we'll wait. It's, it, it, I love that. And the light church over the road. When, we, when David and I were looking for venues here, we went over there, and it was, um, it, it was right in the middle of its food bank delivery. And it, they, I'd never been to actually a live food bank, uh, and it was... Wonderful. So there, it, I've really enjoyed seeing so many different aspects um, of Bradford. So that's that's it. that's Evelyn. Thanks. Thank you very much, Bradford. Look forward to seeing you a lot over the next few years. Um, so I, w you'll forgive me. I will take a little moment to thank my team as well. My goodness me. Um, we've had a special guest visit from Catherine, who used to be our general manager. She's come back and looked after us. Um, we have Fee, who uh, we first met on a festival focus, and now she's working with us, so they're worth signing up to. Um, Victoria, who's on her like, second day of a placement with us, uh, has been looking after all, all sorts of work on reception. Um, and Phoebe, who is on her first event with us, is just joining us as comms manager. Um, I've already thanked David, but I really must just thank David for, he's been with us throughout a year, and so much of the organization, in the way I've envisaged it, is starting to transform into that, and that's been absolutely great. We have great chats, we have great conversations in the office, and we will continue to do so. Thank you, David. And the car share scheme. I couldn't get near it, I was just, keep it over there. Keep it on a Google Drive. What is this? Um, that was great. But a little spec. No, if you like an OA UK newsletter, yeah, do. 
I know you do, because we track who clicks what. Don't you worry, I'm there obsessed on my phone going, she clicked that, she wants that job. Um, Big Brother is watching you. Uh, but uh, a lot of the lovely narrative and a lot of the writing has been done by um, Olivia Parsons, who's been, she came to us as an intern and stayed on and on and on. Um, and particularly um, when we were in the middle of all the COVID malarkey and uh, Olivia was still working for Circulate and doing time with us and she, and she had some extra time and she gave it once uh, and we had someone off on long term. Uh, COVID and Olivia came and helped and supported uh, me, quite particularly me, um, when I was on my own, you know, like we all were, uh, and gave extra time and being really supportive. She had, that time has now come to an end. She's still carrying on with Circulate, but the time there. Uh, but she's written those beautiful newsletters. She's written all those posts that have been out there on Facebook and have really encompassed what we do as a sector. So a special thank you to Olivia, if you would. Um, <laughs> up in Scotland now. So still, still, working, still working remotely. So thank you all for the effort for being here. It, that has just been wonderful and it has lightened my heart. Now, this is the bit, time for the top 10. Are we ready for this? Are we poised? Okay, here we go, OAUK's top 10. So it's not for me, it's, um, it's not just me. We did talk about this as a group, which was really nice. It's, it's sort of been me in the past. Uh, this is just a few things. Now they're not the best shows, they're not the greatest show, they're just moments that have stayed with us. Uh, and of course, it's not just a year, it's usually a year when I do this. Uh, this is like kind of all over the last couple of years. So in no particular order, obviously in an order. Uh, Little Amal, I've got to talk about Little Amal. Everywhere I went across the UK when Little Amal was walking, I seemed to find out. I was even traveling back from another festival in Blackpool and I went through Wigan and saw Little Amal walking through Wigan as I went past. So like everywhere I went, I could see her. This is the... Um, St. Paul's one, where she was greeted like a rock star by these kids, this puppet refugee. It was a wonderful, scaled example of our work. But then I saw her, I remember her being um, Liz in Manchester Day, uh, m marching in, in, in that parade. I, I, all these different places, through Coventry City of Culture, being given the freedom of the city and a lifetime bus pass, I think, to Coventry buses. It was all, and it, so the puppet was great, it was brilliant, but it was all of that community support that went around it. And just, I, I tell you, this bit when she walked around the corner at St. Paul's and these kids went, you know, it was like Beyonce had just walked in the room. It was fantastic. And the narrative there. I also love the story, if you look on the video of it, that some places didn't want her and she got stoned. That's also part of the story. Uh, horrible part of the story, don't get me wrong, but I think it, it was a really, and it belonged outdoors. Of course, her journey was an outdoor one. Uh, so yeah, I, I had a great time with that. Okay, Mirage, Company Diptych, uh, seen, I saw it first in Hull myself, and uh, David and I saw that, and we were taking a festival focus group, we all had a good time with that. Then we saw it again in Fira Tarraga, and it was one of those nights in a Spanish evening and the, everyone got up and danced and it was just like this was heaven. It was the first time back in Europe. And Natasha from Folk Dance Remix just stood there and went, I'd like to make one of those looking at that show. And it was just such a, it was like, this is why we brought you and all of, all of the group here. We'd had such a nice time in Tarragon. It was so nice to be there. Uh, it's a great show as well. It's got an extraordinary energy and an interesting underside and, and uh, yeah, international work at its finest um, kind of narrative dance, but yeah, great, love that. Where are we going? Oh, right, we're abroad again. Tête de Mule, Paradise, uh, Paris, Paradise, Para, it should be Parasite Circus, uh, so that's my typo, uh, Stockton International Riverside Festival. Two crazy French artists, wonderful characters, great puppeteers, blood, guts, dangling breasts being it was so violent, so ugly. Kids loved it. Some people walked away. It was grotesque. It was grand. It was huge. It was filthy in the right kind of way. And I yeah, love that streetness of it. It belonged out there, and they were just such great performers. And a really sentimental happy ending, which was utterly unforeseen. Very moving at the end. Um, really rated that. Right. Up in Scotland, meanwhile, hey, idiots, text me your climate change solutions by adrenalism. Um, this, I really like, uh, so many of our, our shows do deal with environmental matters, and this one really skewers business, skewers the corporate end of things. Um, and it's, it's satirical, and it's rough, and it's a bit crazy, and it's got so much participation, and I really run away from it, I can tell you. Uh, but I, I really enjoy it. It, it, it. 
its sense of urgency about, about the, uh, the really important narrative and the kind of silliness of it and how we all are. This is a festival Anna had in Bell Square in Hounslow. So I'm sorry, I may have to say something in this uh, beautiful cathedral. It's, it's a festival that was run by Mira Kaushik, um, who used to be on our board. Um, and she did a South Asian festival. And really, I, this, is, this is a beautiful image. Um, and there was a lot of it that was beautiful like this. But there was also um, um, a Muslim punk, punk singer. And she sang a song called Huck You, Sajid Javid, and in the middle of Hounslow. And, I absolutely loved it, and I think, uh, I think her name was Javid as well, so you say, I'm no relation of mine. And it was a real shock to me. I've seen a lot of uh, South Asian work, and there was that, and then there was a jazz, uh, 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 Asian, South Asian music fusion, uh, and there was some great narrative storytelling as well as some more traditional dance, and it really uh, changed my perceptions, and I see a lot of this work about that. So, uh, uh, and it's coming back next year, and actually Olivia, I hope, will be producing that uh, in Hounslow. This is, I don't usually love a bit of, I don't love projection mapping, it, mapping, it's fine. But this is a piece that was in GDIF um, called Discover Ukraine Bits Destroyed. The first name, which I won't try and mispronounce, is, is the photographer. So these images, they were, um, the conflict in, in the Ukraine was destroying artwork and these tiles particularly, and they were documenting them to preserve them and then they are destroyed and they become the only um, record of this artwork, which also has kind of crossover, it's kind of historical Russian art. Anyway, it was one of those extraordinary things to be there where the photographer had just arrived from the Ukraine, from a, you know, a war zone, to present this piece of work in Greenwich. Uh, and it was where art became, the, the, art, the act of preservation became art in itself. Uh, and it was, in, it was incredibly moving to see it, and it was really rather beautiful on the walls of Greenwich. Um, and it, it was kind of that whole, <laughs> global narrative that we produced, and it was being outdoors, it was that scale of it, was, was extraordinary and, in, in, and very moving uh, to, to be part of. This is uh, actually, it's, I think Govinda's gone now, but this, I, I saw this show set a few times, I saw it in Stockton as well. This is Circus Raj, a really, again, a really, I really enjoyed this piece. It's very, it's very honest piece of circus, and very, very, it's kind of humble, it's, it's charming, but it has a lovely authenticity to it, and I really enjoyed seeing that Circus Raj. Um, and it, came, it, it moved around to various festivals, so if you caught it, you'll probably know what I mean. It had a, a, lovely, a lovely spirit to it, and really, I met them after a really lovely group of artists. Okay, Winchester Hat Fair. Well, you know my feelings on that already. Um, but this is something that happened was, okay, Sam, the tightrope artist, got COVID, and Daryl and Gromy Tom, I think that's Abel Mabel, they just did the last show, all the buskers, all the hatters got together and did a big um, impromptu show together, doing all the highlights from their acts. And it was so in the spirit of hat fair and pulling together and being a community such as we are. And there's half-dressed men in tutus, which is everything you want in street theatre, isn't it? Uh, and it was great. It was just, it happened and, and everyone went, well, this is how hat fair has to end always. May that be the case. Yeah, I know what I'm saying. Um, this, I just, uh, this was lovely seeing a UK circus company do, uh, who wanted tractor work. Someone said tractor work, there's tractor work in this. Farmyard Circus, I first saw it in Eastley Unwrapped, then saw it again, it had developed and grown uh, quite a bit in, in Out There Festival. Really nice to see a UK company stepping up in, in, in that way. Again, a real charm and authenticity and, and really nice circus and juggling leaks, who doesn't enjoy that? Here's a few, okay, we're getting up to the number ones now. So here's a few, I've got to mention Orton Dance Theatre uh, uh, and Echo, I saw it so many times. Uh, in, and again, lovely that it, it had a show and a narrative and a really strong story, uh, environmentally based, but also fitted beautifully in your parade, uh, which was great. This uh, is Kitchen Sink down at the bottom here in pink about the pink tax. This is uh, where, where they have a men and women game show and the men get loads of extra money because they don't have to pay the pink tax. Very clever, very witty, but all in Welsh. Didn't know what was going on, but I did, sort of. Um, uh, up there is, is Tangled Feet's uh, Murmurations, uh, which was a, a, a headphones piece in, uh, I saw in the Hartlepool in a bird sanctuary um, with a, a very strong environmental theme and narrative and um, a, a lot of language, uh, which I don't always love outdoors, but it was great. Gotta have uh, Dizzy O'Dare's 
uh, falconry dismay. That's it, I think, in Winchester when it was absolutely monsters of rock of falconry world. It was crazy. Loved that. Uh, and here's Saka Rumbaba, um, who, who I, <laughs> I caught in the middle of the Fleetwood Festival of Transport. And I was wandering around that. It's all, I don't know if you've ever been. There's some work, but it's cars and trams and cars and motorbikes and trams. And oh, thank God I found some circus in the middle of this. <laughs> and I'd cycled all the way from Blackpool. I was like, where's this? Where's, oh, thank God. There's like, and it was just lovely to see them. And it's, they're such a lovely company. And, uh, and actually, I remember they kind of saw me and went, right, let's do the show, because they're on wheels. You have to be on wheels to be in the Fleetwood Festival of Transport. So they stopped and said, do it for Angus. That was great. Um, so that was lovely. Right. I've got a tie at number one now. I've got a tie. Didn't, couldn't quite do it. And you'll see why. They're thematically related. So, Jennifer, ho ho! You get in there with Black Victorians, and I'm really pleased you showed that film a bit early on because I remember being there. And it has grown into such a mature piece of work. Um, I've seen it in many different contexts, some of them aesthetically beautiful, some of them not so much. And it's incredibly powerful narrative. Uh, and I pair that with Joseph Tunga's um, Born to Protest. Uh, and again, the, they should be a double bill, and they share some performers. Um, uh, in terms of an eloquent, powerful, considered moving response to Black Lives Matter, that's it for me. Far better than reading a newspaper or listening to, to, to a journalist. This told me the story. This made me understand in my heart how it felt uh, and put these two together. You get the historical, they're linked, even though one is much more contemporary. Uh, and they're beautifully delivered, world-class work. And I say that quite particularly because when I talked earlier about going to the House of Lords and talking to them just before I went to Tarragon, and I talked to them about the fact that I was going to watch Born to Protest in Plaza Mayor, and I talked to them about that. And I, I, mm, I was so proud <laughs> to see a British company out there, and it was them, and it was just, God, I, I was so glad to be back in Europe and see such a fine piece of work and it just made me realize why we have to fight for what we do. Look at that. <laughs> I'm far too emotional for this job, but I hope nobody, well, a little bit of feedback that maybe I went a bit far talking about funding an arts council and all the rest of it. I only say that because I care and I know we all do about sharing what we do and it's so powerful, so moving and the language is universal. And we can, you know, we must fight for our corner. And I know that we're all together on that, doing such different things. Just walk around that marketplace. It's like, what has this got in common? It feels like nothing and yet everything at the same time. So sorry to get a little bit emotional, but I was, I was so, so proud about, uh, of, that, of that moment. I've got nothing to do with the show. I've got no reason. So I, I would put those two shows together because they really spoke in a way that nothing else had, no indoor theater piece had, nothing on telly had in quite the same way to me. Right. Wipe away the tears. So we're going to go on now for a little break. Then we re resume with all these breakouts. But like I say, just want to go and have a drink and have a chat. That's absolutely fine. You've been great. Thank you so much.